humor consumers to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. And I'm Catherine, co-host and bestie. Well, hello, Catherine. Hi, Tracy. Welcome back to the Pod Lab. Mm-hmm. I'm very, glad to be here. I know. Catherine's had some health issues with her mom, so she's been caring for her. Mm-hmm. And that has meant that you've not been available. Yeah. My sister has COVID. Oh. So, and my mom normally stays with my sister. So, yeah. it's kind of been a roller coaster. But prior to that, my sister was on vacation. So, I kind of feel like when I walk down here, it's a beautiful day out today in September. Yeah. Mid September. And it was beautiful walking down here. And I felt like uh, just free. Yeah. <laughs> it felt invigorating. <laughs> That short walk from my house to yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited that we could do this podcast because I had I had said earlier to Catherine, if if we're not able to get it in, Mm -hmm. we're just gonna take the pressure off and not worry about it. Because there are times when literally life happens, you know. Yeah. And then you have to readjust to pause anyway. Yeah, right. And we're in that time and season in life. I mean, both of my parents are now gone. Yeah. But um, many are are in that season of life where their elderly parents are requiring extra you know, help and care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So our prayers are with you and your family and hope that your sister gets better. Yeah. And everybody. I appreciate that. Yeah. Let's find some kind of healing and new normal. Yeah. It'd be nice. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome to our little pod lab, our podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, we are just two best friends who get together once a week and we do this recording and we try to bring a topic that we think you'll care about. And today's topic is being alone. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember how we came up with this I, one. I don't either. Yeah. Because we brainstormed our, we call it our editorial calendar. If you're familiar with creating content, it's just basically a calendar, a list, if you will, yeah, of what what we plan to do every week. Yeah, and sometimes we change it. We look back, we're like, "What were we thinking? Why no?" <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And I'm I've got two topics to add to our list. I told you this last week, but I'm going to yeah. say it to hold us accountable to it. We're going to add colonoscopy. Oh, brother! To the list. Yeah, that's right. And hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it. Colonoscopy uh, and hemorrhoids. Stay tuned, friends, because we have a lot to talk about. Get your sits bath out. <laughs> <laughs> or go get one. <laughs> if you even know what that is, you're 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 on team. Just Google it. You're, yeah, you're on team Trey Cat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump in to yeah. this topic of being alone. Here are the three takeaways, friends. If you stick with us to the end, and I think you should. Here are the things you're going to walk away from this recording. You're going to learn the pros and cons of being alone. Mm -hmm. You know, there are pros and cons to just about everything. Everything in moderation. Balance. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's really what it comes down to. It does. Stay to the end anyway. Right. (laughs) So pros and cons of being alone. Number two, our experiences. We're going to share sort of our thoughts, which is why we have a podcast. And then number three, what God says about it. What God says about being alone. So, oh, you know, I think another takeaway we could just say yeah. is that our listeners are accompanied by us. Like we're keeping them company. So that's a takeaway right there. It is. And keeping actually, company. that's our call to action. When yeah. we get to oh, the end. Yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> I didn't do the outline. but she, she normally does the outline. But because today she was busy. Occupied. Taking care of her mom. And her mom has Alzheimer's. And so anybody that's listening who has had a loved one or friend or whatever who has had that, you know that it is a lot. And so she was she was taking care of mom. And so I did the outline. But she just said the takeaway, mm-hmm. the call to action, and she had no idea. So yeah. anyway, let's roll. All right. All right. The pros and cons of being alone. What, what you got there? Well, we are going to mention the pros first, the good news first. And well, where where are you getting guess, this? Are you just pulling this out of your head? No. Negative. No. Where are you getting Although it? Although I would 100% agree, but it's called Psych Alive. That's a website. It's a website, psychalive.org. And then mm-hmm. the title is Being Alone, the Pros and Cons of Time Alone. Nice. Perfect. You know, what did we do before Google and computers and finding all you this information? Those, those heavy brick... 
Tana <laughs> encyclopedias. It's a and, book. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's what we did. All right. What are the pros and cons? Well, the first one, being alone allows our brains to recharge. Mm. And don't we all need that? So the, one of these doctors that has contributed to this article says constantly being on doesn't give your brain a chance to rest and replenish itself. By being by yourself with no distractions gives you the chance to clear your mind, focus, and think more clearly. You know, that reminds me of a book that I read once called Margins. Actually, I think I've, re- I've read that book now more than once. Mm. I can't remember the the author's name, but it's called Margins. And it's basically about l- leaving margin on the pages of your life. Sure. Because if, if you can imagine trying to read something that has no white space, no yes. margins, it's just like from end to end, all letters. <gasps> Do you know, I sometimes look at recipes like that, like, yeah, that's... <laughs> way too many steps and instructions right (laughs) and right away your brain just says this is too much for me to take in oh yeah and then it's it's fight or flight and you choose flight that's right Mm -hmm. everybody get your own meal because mom's not wanting to follow a recipe cereal night (laughs) takes too long again good for us to revitalize right yeah the next one is being alone increases productivity that's always good I like to be I, I like to be productive like every day if I can. Okay, and, and when you think about it, if you're not alone, how is it that it's impacting your productivity? Well, if like let's say that you have kids or you have guests or you like in your case right now, you're caring for your mom, so you're not able to do the things that you would do if if she weren't there because you have to do the things that you have to do because she is there. Yeah, I would add to that definitely that I'm highly distracted. Right, because at any given moment when you're caring for someone with Alzheimer's or if someone listening is in that season of time where they have an infant, let's say, right? So you have, when the baby's sleeping, you kind of can take a breather, but you know that at any time, baby can wake up. Exactly. And then baby needs mama. Yeah. It even somewhere in there said something about even the ping of a text message can be a distraction and interrupt your productivity you know, thinking, your productive thinking. Yeah, I hadn't thought it, about that, but that's so true. Yeah, it can throw off our concentration. Yeah. And break the whole thing. Interesting. You know, now that I'm thinking about that, I can remember when my first one was born, Patrick. Mm-hmm. He was just, I, I think, an infant or a toddler. And I think it was the doctor that told me when a child has a staring fit, like it's just staring into space and you kind of want to interrupt that. I remember that it was said that no don't break that they're they're thinking they're contemplating something you know and to let them be wow that explains so much (laughs) about or like a student staring out the window (laughs) that's that's where my brain went to elementary school because i used to be that girl that would just be staring out the window Like in a gosh, in a spacey, tracy like gaze. You know what I used to like to do during school class or whatever. I would like to. I I always had a little calendar that fit in my purse or bag or whatever, and I used to love to color in it. And I still to this day like to put stickers in my calendar or. (laughs) You know, you and I shop for calendars every year together, and we look for those the fun ones. ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I used to, and it just would help with concentration. I would just, you know, the human, doodle. The human brain is such an amazing thing. It yeah, is. It, it is. is. All right. What else you got there? Pros. Well, along with productivity, mm-hmm. it boosts creativity. Hmm. Yeah. It actually says that studies are now showing that people are actually more likely to come up with their best ideas on their own rather than during group brainstorming sessions. I was surprised to read that. You know when I get my best ideas? Hmm. When I'm alone in the shower. Oh, yeah. Seriously, yeah. because you're you're doing something. You're, you're washing too. your hair. You're taking a shower, whatever. And when I was first writing my comedy bits and stuff, mm-hmm. I used to come up with something. And I remember doing this so specifically. I would come up with an idea and then I would get out of the shower and I'd be like, where's a pen? Where's a pen? Yeah. <laughs> right. Because then you have to have. Right. Yeah. So I would just take an eyeliner and write on my mirror. 
Oh, really? I did for for when I was initially getting my oh. my one woman show together, uh-huh. like because it's a lot of yeah. writing that you have to do. Anyway, yeah, when you think about it, a shower is invigorating. There's there shouldn't be any too many things distracting you. <laughs> in the right. Shower. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It cool. says yeah. It says human beings in general and wait human beings in general and creativity in particular are sensitive to criticism for from others which is one reason why so many of us are able to think more free freely and express ourselves more clearly when we're alone it all makes sense yeah and you think about if you're in a group think tank or you know, like brainstorming session mm-hmm. yeah no you're gonna stifle that creativity yeah that reminds that- me of those morning pages from oh um, yes what was it called artist way yes Mm -hmm. so if anybody's listening and you want to like dive into this whole idea of creativity the morning pages just google it morning pages from artist way yeah it's a way for you to basically do a brain dump brain dump thing in the morning but it's just you make sense yes exactly love it all right another pro Mm -hmm. and the last one is being alone can actually strengthen relationships with others so basically, in a nutshell, a nutshell, it's like um, being away from them gives time for like a healthy attitude. In a way, you know that old phrase, distance makes the heart grow stronger. It's kind right. of like that. I, I would say that's, the, I mean, at first, when you first said it, it sounds counterintuitive because you're apart. But I think as you, you put in the words, a healthy you know, a healthy attitude about the relationship because you don't want to be too clingy. You, you know, that's not all good. Yeah. Well, and cool. it, it says there's several reasons why spending some time alone. Yeah. Right. Uh, can actually improve the relationships. That's because it's it's in balance. It's in check. You know, when I, I, I'm sure that people who have had a spouse retire can relate to what that's like. Mm hmm. And in the beginning, because I've observed this in different friends or family that have had one spouse retire where the other one's still working, you know? Mm, yeah. And when they're both retired, there's a there's a transition period, I understand. Mm-hmm. Now, Ron and I are not retired, so we'll get there eventually, mm-hmm. hopefully. Um, <laughs> but I understand that spending all that time together can be a bit stressful. So one needs to, like, pursue some hobbies or some other engaging ways to engage with other people outside of that relationship otherwise it can get a little tense well it does say you know maintaining a certain level of independence does um it just keeps that spark going in the relationship and yeah having others to kind of talk to and okay what about the cons of being alone the cons of being alone Mm -hmm. well being alone makes us vulnerable to our inner critics so that means your subconscious talking to yourself and isolation it can be the perfect breeding ground for negative self-critical thoughts you don't want to talk matters it is so important yeah you don't want to spend too much time alone right because of those critical inner voices yeah they can multiply (laughs) just like anything yeah you know you don't want to feed that beast definitely not okay what's another one being alone can lead to painful loneliness. Yeah. Yeah. So it does say to it's important to distinguish between time spent happily alone and time spent feeling lonely. Yeah, there's a difference. Yeah. Right. You know, um, just a side note. So hold your thought, whatever you were going to say there. But my mind is just thinking about people who are suddenly left alone. You know, like if they're widowed yeah. mm-hmm. or w- widow word, however you say it. Yeah widowed widowed but there yeah i mean that would be just such a big shock Mm -hmm. to the system if you've been married for a long long time and now all of a sudden your everyday habits are changing and then that of course you have the grieving on top of loneliness yeah yes yes that is so true i'm sorry for anybody that's going through that i mean my heart just breaks i can't help it i'm one of those people if i see if you're sad i'm sad if you're crying i'm crying you definitely are (laughs) i can't help it yeah (laughs) i'm like that snapchat app that we just looked at where um oh yes you make the crying (laughs) face and then pretty soon i mean 
I, I yeah I can't it's a help it. Uh, yeah I'm getting teary I just talking are. about it <laughs> she really is folks I can't help it <laughs> you're definitely like that Lord yeah. help me oh, I have tried I know you, <laughs> you. I should be an actress I could cry on demand you can all right let's move on <laughs> okay you need some tissue yes <laughs> Do you really? No, it's gone. Oh. I'll just use this. Use your shirt. I will. I don't. <laughs> oh, here. By the way, Catherine and I, she came over and I, I look a fright. And I told her before she got here, I said, I look a fright. I worked out this morning and then I was just like, I haven't taken a shower. So I don't smell that great either. My hair, I haven't even combed it. I, I did not wash my face. I brushed my teeth. That's all I did. Mm. Well, you got dressed too. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or that would be worse than a fright. That would be a horror show. Yeah. Thanks for the tissue. All right. Let's move along. Okay. Being alone or lonely can lead to depression. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. And again, that's just talking about staying, being alone too long and also feeling lonely because you can be with people and feel lonely absolutely but there's more about that in this article and it's a little over my head to even try even if i read it it's a little over my head you know i get it and i think that people everybody can understand that there's a difference between giving yourself some space Mm -hmm. you know some healthy space Mm -hmm. and feeling lonely yeah yeah And being alone could be bad for our health, our physical health. Studies have found that social isolation and loneliness can increase the likelihood of mortality by up to 30%. You know, Ron and I watched that series, the reality show, Alone. Oh, yeah. We talked about this uh, when we were just kind of brainstorming about this episode. And I had seen it advertised as one of these things on Netflix. I think it's Netflix that it's on. It's one of those streaming mm. things. Yeah. I had seen the advertisement for it. And I thought, that sounds dumb. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to watch that, that too. dumb thing. Mm. Well, then, you know, you see it so many times. And pretty soon you're like, okay, well, let's just see if it is dumb. Cause, <laughs> because, okay, I know what got us. I know what got us. When it says this is like number one or two or oh, three. Oh, yes. And you, you yes. think there can't be that many dummies in the, in the right? <laughs> So we watched it. Yeah. And we got hooked. Uh-huh. We got hooked. And what they do, if you're not familiar with Alone, the mm-hmm. series, they take a group mm-hmm. of, of human beings and they put them alone simultaneously, but they are utterly alone. As in, it's just them. Not even the camera person. There is no camera person. Right. They are the camera people. Yeah. They, Which I learned that from you. Right. So they give these people a tripod and a couple cameras and a GoPro and whatever, and they have to film their own experience, mm-hmm. but they are utterly alone. And it is interesting to see the the head game. Mm-hmm. And so many of the people, because I think they started out with a group of, I don't know how many, 12, let's say, right? Yeah. And then it's a process of tapping out. It's not elimination like on some of these other shows like Survivor, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. they vote somebody off the island or whatever they do. Not in this one. This one is they'll go as long as you stay in. Hmm. But if you tap out, then then you're out. And it's the last man standing, man or woman standing is the winner. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's just interesting, the psychological, so many of them said, I was ready for the fitness. I was ready for the, you know, being a survivalist, but I could not handle being alone. You know what I'm thinking of? That what? movie with Tom Hanks. Um, oh, yes. And he crashes on the island. Um, yes. Well, and, and he has Wilson. He is so alone that one of the things that washes up is a package and it, inside of it is a soccer ball. And yes, he makes that his friend. He paints a face on it. He talks to it because he's so lonely. Yeah. And then when Wilson floats away, he's like, no, Wilson. Seriously. Yeah. It's our human need for companionship and relationships. It is. And Mm -hmm. God himself said it is not good for a man to be alone. That's right. Mm -hmm. So here we are. All right. Move (laughs) along. And then uh, it says, what's the verdict? Well, while human beings need time alone to allow their brains to rest and rejuvenate, too much time alone or a lack of social connections can be harmful harmful to our mental and physical health. Yes. And it's important to distinguish between healthy time alone 
uh, where we're being productive, creative, introspective, uh, versus negative time alone where we're being self-critical or feeling lonely. Yeah, and it, and the bottom line is balance. That's exactly right. And also, I, I will throw this in, I think that it's helpful if you're in a season where you're not really sure what's going on, but something's going on. So if you're if you're feeling depressed, mm-hmm. get professional help. We've said that before on this podcast. Many times. If you're going through a season of grief, mm-hmm. if you're in a grieving season, get professional help. Medication can do a lot yes. to chemically reframe your brain. Yeah. So there's that. But then also talk therapy, talking things out and not feeling alone and all of that. Mm-hmm. All very good. Yeah. All right. Anything else about this particular no, takeaway think... of the pros and cons? No. I we've think covered we've... it thoroughly. Very yeah. good. All right. Well, let's move to our second takeaway, which is our experiences. Yeah. I, for one, raised five boys, as you know with my muffin so you were barely alone never by the way this podcast is sponsored by that's right our husband's puffin yes poo poo and muffin (laughs) kenny and ron (laughs) we say it with so much like shame we should we we wish we should be more proud we are proud i'm so proud (laughs) it's sponsored by puffin our guys, our guys are just 100% supportive of everything that we do. Thank God. Mm-hmm. And Ron and I, we raised five boys. Now they're gone. They've grown and flown. Mm-hmm. Well, when they were all in the house, and even as the first two left, and then we still had three and whatever, because they're spread out over 11 years. So there, it was crazy. Yeah. But Ron would go once a year ice fishing to Wisconsin and he would take all of them with him. And he would go up to Wisconsin to be with his friend Pat. My gosh. Oh, (laughs) oh. And I would just like, when is the fishing trip? When is the fishing trip? And I loved it because it was different than my normal, you know. I mean, we we went over this the other day about um, groceries. We used to buy... A gallon of milk and a loaf of bread for each day. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about five boys, Mm -hmm. you know, if they have a bowl of cereal or maybe two and they have a sandwich, you know, for to take to lunch. Yeah. Anyway, now that we're empty nesters, we don't go through a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread every day. Right. Mm, Right. We don't. But when we first became empty nesters, Ron comes home with two gallons of milk and I'm going, who, who? (laughs) Who's that for? What are you going to do with that? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> Thought we needed it. Oh. Yeah. So so balance is the key because when I was living with so many people, mm-hmm. I would just feel that sense of just like what you were describing earlier, like somebody's going to need something. Yeah. And you're always at this heightened alert. So then when they're gone, I don't have to cook. I don't have to clean. Mm-hmm. I don't even have to be dressed. Yeah. I could just be walking around totally nothing. <laughs> When you constantly have that, it also is exhausting. It you know, is. You, it makes you feel fatigued when it's day in and day out. Right. 365 days a year yeah. except for ice fishing weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was a that was like a nice treat. And honestly, truth be told, I probably should have done more during that season to give myself to, to schedule in more breaks right. like that. Mm-hmm. I probably should have done that or asked Ron, could you take him twice a mm-hmm. year? <laughs> once a month you know something like that i actually remember this um i knew somebody who was divorced and they got their kids like every other weekend they went to the Mm. dad and Mm -hmm. i was like that sounds all right to me (laughs) (laughs) i i i don't do not i mean i do not hope for that for anybody but i was kind of jealous i gotta say (laughs) all right um that's because you felt so desperate exactly that's what i mean by saying if if i'm a young mom like if i could go back to mm-hmm. young younger mom Tracy, I would whisper in my own ear and say, "It's okay for you to mm-hmm. need a break more often than you're getting." Yeah, and it's okay for you to ask for it. Yeah, I remember thinking when we were neighbors, and I oh. didn't see you that much at all. <laughs> and I used to think, "Well, she's like the old woman in the show. Where is she <laughs> with the <laughs> kids?" I know. Right? Yes, you were in there in the in the house, and I was like, "I know she's in there. Yes. Her car's there." <laughs> yes, and yep. don't you remember the first time you called me? Yes. Yeah. What did you say? I don't mean to be nosy, but there's a boy. There's legs hanging out of your top window in the back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it was my son who's yeah. going to get married next month. Yeah. Now he's some other woman's problem. <laughs> 
he he was uh, i think three or four he had to be four yeah he was four years old and he and his buddy were shooting matchbox cars out of the window into the the gutter Mm -hmm. of the house Mm -hmm. and this was on the second story you know we had a two-story house yeah and he they pretty soon all the matchbox cars were in the they're still in that gutter (laughs) they're still there we sold that house yeah but nobody's ever going to go in there and look for him yeah but he was going to spidey man out the window with his legs (laughs) And his buddy was hanging on to his um, <laughs> wrists. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for calling me. You're and welcome. L- that The light just went off. Mm-hmm. Thank you for calling me and letting me know that mm-hmm. my kid was about to die because he's still alive. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, 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 so the ice fishing thing was one of my experiences that was great to be alone. And then the empty nest. I mentioned the empty nest. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what that would feel like, but I absolutely love it. Yeah, I cannot stop I know smiling. You do. It's wonderful. Yeah. Maybe it's that way for me because we had such a long season well, of not I, empty. I think another important like component of that is because you know they're okay. Of like, course. They're, they're, they're in a good place, each of them. Yeah. So it's comforting to know that i think if it were some other circumstance where you know you yeah lost one. and and i don't um i don't begrudge anybody who has a harder time with the empty nest because we all react differently mm-hmm. to things mm-hmm. and for right now i'm just like mm, yeah this is all good <laughs> yeah <laughs> half a gallon of milk please that's all we need yeah Okay, and then finally, and then I'll I'll go to your experiences, but the the final thing that I thought would be interesting to share is that I do sometimes now, I have like this fear, and I don't I wouldn't call it an anxiety, but I would call it and, and that's certainly not a phobia, but just like a wondering of what if something were to happen to Ron and I had to live alone. Mm-hmm. You know, so, similar to what we were talking about earlier if you're suddenly thrust into this new life, mm-hmm. you know. And I do know in my head and in my heart that God will get me through every season of life Mm -hmm. as he has in the past. He will in the future. But I do have that because I deeply love my husband and I cannot imagine life without him. Mm -hmm. He's, I look forward to him coming home every day. Yeah. He looks forward to coming home. He every morning gives me a kiss and I'm sound asleep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) As I know your husband does that also. Um, So it's good it's a good relationship and I really cherish that. Yeah. And that's probably why my heart just breaks for people who, who do experience that because I do feel like, Oh, that would be so hard. Absolutely. Now, what about you? Like as I'm mentioning these things, Mm -hmm. I know that you're, they're resonating with you. For sure. There was a time period where Kenny had to work out of state oh, for a yeah. very long period of time. Not that long ago. I mean, and he was gone for a while. He was. Uh, in 2015, mm-hmm. uh, he was gone uh, most of the year. That's hard. Yeah. And then prior to that, I think in 2014, he also a good chunk of time had to work out of state. Mm. And when we first found out that he was going to to be doing this i remember walking with you around the block and and i was upset because i didn't want to be alone you know right and it's funny because at that stage you know my kids were younger and they were all at home and there were times of course i was desperate to have or not desperate but i longed for some quiet time and but i didn't but the reality of knowing that he wouldn't be there with me was dreading it. And when that time came, I didn't like it at all when he was gone. And we tried to make trips like he would fly home occasionally, or I think there was one or two times I went to see him, Mm -hmm. but it was difficult. And then I remember this one time he surprised me coming home. I was at your house yeah, and the girls knew about it. Emily and Ellie knew and anyway, he came in the door and I was I was just overcome with, yeah. with joy. So that was a time where I experienced, I, I had the kids, so I wasn't alone alone, but I felt alone. You know, he was missing. Right, because he's, he, you, the two of you are now one. Mm-hmm. That's what marriage is supposed to be. It's mm-hmm. where two become one. So that's like now half of you is gone. You yeah. know, your rock, your, your soulmate, your, your, you know, emotional yeah. support yeah exactly that. Mm-hmm. my a companion yeah. you know uh so so that was very challenging mm-hmm. and that being said you talking about not necessarily fearing ron being gone but you know you 
I, the I know thoughts. Yeah. the thoughts of it. Sure. I know one time it brought you to tears when Hello. we were talking about it. <laughs> and I had a, I had a, um, a season of that uh, time as well. Yeah. And that, but that was a while ago. I just had this fear that Kenny was just going to, something was going to happen to him. And I yeah. had that same, same exact thing. On the other hand, when the kids were smaller, there were times where there was constantly kids over, you know, oh, and I yes, was, <laughs> they're probably my kids. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I would say 99% of the time, Adam, one of your kids was Adam was there. always there. And Joel, too. True that. Yeah. But Joel was Joel, more quiet. Adam was more visible <laughs> with his little face in your door. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So I very much looked forward to some alone time sure yeah those are the the times that you know stick out the most but yeah i've always been more on the social side wanting to be with others anyway so and how do you feel uh, i know your nest is not empty just yet Mm -hmm. but your youngest daughter is now engaged Mm -hmm. so her Mm -hmm. wedding is planned it's in two years Mm -hmm. so the empty nest is on the horizon i know i feel uh, it's mixed emotions. I'm at one on one end. I'm kind of looking forward to it because we're both grown women sure. living in the same home. She's got ideas. I've got ideas, you know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, but so on one end um, of the spectrum, I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. On the other, I'm deeply saddened. She's my youngest. Right. And um, we do talk. We do, you know, I look forward to when she comes home each day to, to you know, ask her how her day went, things yeah. like that. I'll miss that. Yeah. And it's not a sadness of, oh, I'm so sad that you're getting married and moving on in life. It's not that at all. No, it's but, a healthy, sad. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just like a surreal feeling of I can't believe how fast those years went. Yeah. Um, th- this life is brief, as we know. Yeah. Very good. Anything else that you'd like to add to Mm. our experiences? I don't think so. All right. Well, let's see what God has to say. Mm. Because, you know, interesting, as we already mentioned, God said, as soon as he created mankind, he said, just not good. (laughs) It's not good for man to be alone. He he did say that right away. He did. And he said, so I'm going to make him a helper, a suitable helper, mm-hmm. you know. And then further on in the scripture, it says, you know, for two are better than one. Yes. Because you have a friend to help you up. Mm-hmm. You know, if one goes down, there's somebody to help them up. But, but you know, it's difficult for somebody who's down and they have nobody. Right? Yeah. You know what's coming to mind, too, is when Moses, he needed to keep his hands up for a certain amount of time. And yeah. his brother was on one side. And his sister or his wife? His I, sister on the other. When he had to hold up the he had to hold the snake or something or some oh, rods or something. There was yeah. something that to give the people hope. It was something like that. Something yeah. symbolic. Yeah. Sorry, I don't I don't remember what the thing was. Mm-hmm. Left I feel our, bad too. I, I know should, I our Bible know study leader oh my Linda. Gosh. Linda, what's the thing? <laughs> what's the thing that they held that. up? But just goes to show yes. the model of support yes and god created people in community Mm -hmm. right he put people in families this is the way that we roll Mm -hmm. we we, you know Mm -hmm. mankind came about that way well this is the scripture that i chose for today it's luke chapter 5 verse 16 and it says this but jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed Mm-hmm. Okay, now that comes after the first 15 verses of Luke chapter 5, and it's basically Jesus is ministering. You know, he's ministering to his disciples, and he's engaged in the crowds, and yep. the crowds are yep. gathering, and they're getting bigger, and he sees some boats off to the side, and he's like, okay, we're going to have to get in those boats, and we're going to have to go out a little bit so that I can put some space between me and these people yeah. so that I can minister to them appropriately, yeah. and then he does the miracle of the fish in the nets, and he shows all the people, you know, like, the true power of God. All right. Then he heals the guy with leprosy. So he's busy, people. He, yes. He is a busy worker. Mm-hmm. And then he's, and then, okay, it goes on to say that people are hearing about this. And so more crowds are gathering. And then verse 16, but Jesus often withdrew mm-hmm. to lonely places and prayed. Mm-hmm. And that's my encouragement to, to anybody who's feeling 
like I, like I said, I gave the example of if I could go back and talk to younger Tracy, mm -hmm. I would say it's okay for you to take some space. Mm. Unnecessary. Yeah. And of course, we believe, we believe in our faith mm -hmm. that God hears us when we pray. Mm. And one of the practices that Catherine and I do every week, you know, Lord willing, there are times when we, we can't do it because of sickness or we're out of town or whatever. But we have a weekly standing practice of prayer. Mm -hmm. And we get together with a, a handful of other Christian ladies and we pray. And we carve out, it's an hour, it's about an hour. Mm -hmm. And we use the Acts model, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. I learned this a million years ago when I was in college. And we, we follow that structure and it is life-giving. Mm -hmm. It really is because we care about each other. We, we bear one another's burdens. And then the other beautiful thing that happens, we do this typically on Monday. Sometimes we flip and flop Monday, Tuesday, depending on schedules and such. But the beautiful thing that happens is Wendy, our prayer partner, she said this, it starts the week off with a much better tone. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then if something happens in one of our lives, we have prayer people. Right. That we can shoot a message off to and say, I need you to pray for me mm -hmm. over this or whatever. Mm -hmm. We pray for all of our children. We cover all of them, you know, mm -hmm. and some. Yeah, the, the support is amazing. It is. And you, you can feel the support, you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. in this season right now, what you're going through with you had to be separate from our little group mm -hmm. for a time because you're caring for your mom, but hopefully you felt supernaturally supported by texts and messages. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So that Jesus gave us the best example. He, he was, you know, a, a great example of what to do. Yeah. Yes. Minister to people, your family, your circle, whatever, mm -hmm. but self care is important. Very much so. I love that we have that example because, yes, he was with his 12 disciples mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. He confided. He needed them. Yeah. He needed them. But he also needed his father and he needed to draw from his strength. Yeah. Can't do it alone. Preach Always. it, sister. Mm -hmm. That is for sure. All right. Well, I have a call to action here. And I mentioned. <laughs> oh, what is it? <laughs> I mentioned it earlier. <laughs> Or you I mentioned did. you mentioned it. Yeah. If you're feeling alone, friends, if you ever feel like, oh, nobody gets me, I'm alone. Mm -hmm. Of course, turn to Jesus first, mm -hmm. right? But when you when you're done there, <laughs> come and visit us yes. at the Life Happens Life Anyway podcast mm -hmm. and just binge listen to all of our podcasts. Yeah. And you can hopefully this is our hope is that you feel like you're at this table with us because I guarantee you. I hope you, so. I know, because yeah. we're inclusive that way. Come along on this journey with yes. us. Yes, we're like, we're just two idiots trying to put one <laughs> foot in front of the other. That's a fact. Yes. Well, you've been listening to, are we done? Because I was about well, to give our clothes. I, I, I <laughs> would ahead. say too, or if you know someone else who's lonely, yeah. you know, then, then have them give us a listen. Yes. Hmm. All right. And let us know that you're listening because we need some encouragement oh, too. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Please. Because we feel alone here. Sometimes. Ish. Right. Sometimes. I'm glad that I'm not doing this podcast alone. I have always said to you, well, in the beginning, I said a lot, you know, you could do this when, totally yeah, without me. I, if I started I've, talking to myself and then answering myself, that would really, <laughs> people would lock me up. This, All right. Are we done? Yes. Okay. We could <laughs> be done. All right. I'm going to give the close. Okay. You've been listening to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm still comedian Tracy DeGraff. I'm still Catherine. And see you next time. Bye-bye.